When I first got my Ricoh GR3, I was pretty much using it as any of my previous and other cameras, which means in aperture priority mode. While I appreciated its small size that made it pocketable and easy to carry, I was a bit frustrated by its slower autofocus, short battery life and other minor quirks. But this was until my whole shooting experience changed after I finally upgraded to the latest firmware and started using the snap distance priority mode. So this will be a wrap to my Rico experiments. I will share my exact settings and setup when using the GR. If you have not watched the previous videos, I challenge myself to shoot almost on a daily basis with the Rico GR3 for about a month. Thanks to this daily practice, I am today in a pretty good place in regards to my settings, as they have stayed very consistent in my last photography outings. Let me start by saying that I shoot now with the snap distance priority mode almost 90% of the time. And when you are shooting in that mode, you only have to choose two things. The amount of depth of field you want and the focus distance from one meter to infinity with some smartly selected increments in between. It means that for the most part, your aperture, shutter speed and ISO are controlled by the camera, which might trigger some of you swearing only by the manual mode, but I can tell you I had the most fun shooting with the GR3 more than ever before since I made the switch. There are three depths of field level going from the shallowest to the deepest. You control this by spinning the central dial left or right. Then you choose your focus distance by moving the front dial. On the left side of the screen, you can see a scale where the green part shows the area that is in focus with your current setting combination. During bright days, I usually go for DOF3 and then adjust my snap distance based on where I stand compared to the subject, but keeping it at 2.5 meter is a good solution to be quick to react. With this much depth of field, focusing at 2.5 meter will get most of the frame in focus. So if you don't have the time or forget to adjust your snap distance, you are still likely to get a sharp shot. By the way, I'm not in look for a crazy bokeh when shooting with my GR3. I prefer have more in focus and more layers in my compositions and that's why I keep it at DOF3. With this mindset, it also becomes easier to use the GR almost like a true point and shoot. mentioned, I now use the snap distance priority mode almost 90% of the time, but there are still some situations where I would prefer using the regular aperture priority mode. For example, I may want to have full control over my focus or open up to 2.8 to have a little bit more bokeh. What's interesting is that you can set up your camera in a way that allows you to quickly switch to the A mode or even bypass the snap distance priority mode without switching back to the aperture priority mode. To set this up, first I keep the mode dial on the A mode and then I program a button to switch to the snap distance priority mode without having to go through the menu. So I suggest choosing the right one on the central dial, the one for the drive mode. Since I never really change my drive mode when shooting my GR, I don't really need it. Once you've set this up, you can enter the snap distance priority mode and change a few more buttons from there. First, with the FN button, we want to enable autofocus. Second, you change the shutter button setting to the AE lock only. Third, the touch autofocus to AF point plus focus plus shoot. With this combination of settings, you can actually use the aperture priority mode to some extent while still being in the snap distance priority mode. When pressing the FN button, your camera will focus with the latest AF point and aperture settings used when you were still in aperture priority mode before. I usually set my AF point to the center and my F stop to 2.8 before entering the snap distance priority mode. So when I press the FN button, I'm in this quote-unquote bokeh mode and I can purposely focus on something closer and try to get a shallower depth of field. But in a situation where you have more time and don't necessarily want to open up to F2.8, you can still press the right button on the central dial to quickly move back to the full aperture priority mode. The touchscreen autofocus is another way to have extra flexibility, but the funny thing is that unlike the autofocus on the FN button, the settings will remain the same as the snap distance priority mode. 
Let's say your combination of uh, DOF and snap distance give you a hundredth of a second of a shutter speed and 6.3 aperture. It will stay the same when using the Touch AF. I suggest choosing the one that both focus and shoots at the end because we never know what may happen between the moment we touch on the screen and the shutter is released. This can actually help you capture unexpected decisive moments. Let's talk about a few extra settings to complete these GR3 setups that you are free to apply if it fits your shooting approach. First I use auto ISO all the time with the upper limit at 4000 and the minimum shutter speed at 1 over 100. If you want to freeze the subject in a really fast motion you can set that a bit higher of course. Since I don't require a button to adjust my ISO, I program the exposure lock on the left button of the central dial. If I want absolute control and taking the time to set all the parameters of my photo before shooting, I can simply press on the exposure lock and be assured that my exposure won't make any unexpected move. This brings me to the metering, that's simple, I always keep it to multi-segment. I think it works well and as suggested before, I can always have more control by using the exposure lock toggle. Finally, when shooting RAW, which I do most of the time, I usually set my exposure compensation to minus 0.3. It is a good balance to keep the highlights details while allowing easy recovery of your shadows if needed. I would move that only in special situations when I want to really crush my blacks and have high contrast image for example. Lastly, when I shoot mainly RAW, I occasionally try some new JPEG recipe, but when doing so I recommend shooting RAW plus JPEG so you have a backup, but I already made a whole video about GR3 recipes that you are free to watch if you're interested. That's pretty much all my secrets to uh, set up my GR3 for daytime shooting. It is quite different from what I would use on a more standard camera like my a7 IV, but I love it. It creates a whole new shooting experience. It is very casual and gives me more time to focus on things like composition and noticing moments. I'd like to say that I really don't lose a lot of shots because of this setup. It's pretty much the opposite actually. I've been more excited about using the GR3 and that led me to shoot more and expose myself to more different situations to capture some nice photos. It may take a while to fully adapt to this focus distance thing and understand what 1 meter, 2 meter, 5 meter really are, but I can tell you it's really worth it. That's all for today, I hope it was helpful to you and I look forward to reading you in the comments. If you're interested in knowing how I use my GR3 at night, you can watch this video here. And with that said and done, I wish you a good day and let's catch up in the next one. Bye!